So this is the windscreen wiper switch, which goes on just in there on the binnacle of the Land Rover. And this is a word of warning, whoops. This is a word of warning to others because I just broke mine because I didn't, yeah, I sort of worked out how to get it off after I broke it. So I've split it there, you can see, and there, which is really annoying because I thought that this little, oops, I don't know if you can focus on that, that little notch thing that comes out, oh, come on, focus, um, was static. And I thought they would have just pushed it past, there's a little channel in that, um, in that knob there, which, which sort of looks like, you know, when the plastic was new, it would just flex enough to push past it. So I presumed that that was solid. So I tried to, squeeze this very very gently with a pair of pliers and it cracked so it was sort of typical which is really annoying so I was really trying not to crack it but it's so brittle so old but anyway I think I'm still gonna be able to use it because I've tested it and it seems to be fine but the way it works is when that is in there because that's oops that's how that's obviously how it is that is oh, that is on the end of that you get a very fine, mine had seized a little bit, but put loads of WD-40 on it. And that is such a cool little switch because that little, I don't know if you can see. Oh, it doesn't have focuses. But that little knob is on a spring and goes in and out. There you go, look, see? And I thought it was solid because my, mine had seized, but look at that. How cool is that? Just on a, on a switch for a, windscreen wiper but anyway so just put some WD-40 on it tap it very lightly with a light hammer and it should sink in mine sunk in and stayed in but then I put some w more WD-40 on it and moved it around a bit and it sprang back out so this is an interesting one I've just found a whole bunch of loose cables in the back terminals which I thought oh might have popped out the back of the dashboard or something so I'm in the middle of the wiring but following the Haynes manual electrical diagram it shows this is the flasher unit for the indicators so one end goes to the fuse box which it does eventually and the other goes to the switch under there however there is this whole bundle of cables with various terminals coming off of that single cable which goes, should go to the fuse box and has another flasher unit on it. So I'm wondering whether this is either a pre-wire for hazard lights, because the car didn't ever have ha hazard lights, um, or what it might be. But I could essentially bypass all of that, but I think I'll keep it in there because when I take the car to Germany, my guess is I'm gonna need hazard lights. So I've marked it with the word hazard lights, question mark and we'll see if that's what it is. Right, so quick update for today. I haven't been working on it long, but um, what I have done is, whoops, I have uh, fitted the steering wheel uh, and finished up the dashboard. I've done as much cable testing as I can. I haven't actually used a multimeter. I've done it by eye and using the diagram, the electrical diagram on yeah, in the Haynes manual. Um, fuse box all in under there. I I put a battery in just now, uh, which is that one, which is supposed to be fully charged, but it didn't really do much. It turned over and a couple of lights came on and the windscreen wipers worked, which is great. Um, and it did turn over, but that was about it. So I'm charging it at the moment and um, yeah, see how we get on. But otherwise there's a whole bunch of tidying up in my workshop to do because it's a complete mess and also um, doing some finishing off. Um, I say finishing off in the, in the broadest sense of the word because um, obviously it's nowhere near finished, but uh, just doing a bit of tidying up in the, in the workshop. Yes, so 
new battery. We have tried to start this already, but um, there's an array of batteries on the floor there, and I think the battery charge is broken. So we now have a, bought a new battery, uh, and hoping that it will at least turn over. So this is the first proper time of trying to start it after what is now three years of working very hard to get to this point. That's, that's good. That's good. But, have we got any fuel in there, you see? That's good. So that means the start is fine. But there's no... No fuel coming through. Cool. Yeah, maybe I do need to choke. Just leave that running. Okay. Let me do that. You guys start. Okay, I'll hold it back. Yeah, hold yeah, it back. Yeah, yeah. Just lift it above your head, yeah. Can you just get the engine, not me? Too much choke, maybe half choke. Yep. I'm not getting any fuel. What, what is blowing that out now? Just a quick update on the Land Rover, um, what can I say, uh, I have, I got it started about midnight the other night with a friend of mine um, and it was running pretty lumpy, I have adjusted the timing as much as possible um, and I'm yet to do a proper, proper setup on it, um, but I found that it has an issue whereby the inlet manifold is sucking air in um, past the gasket so I don't know whether that the gasket is knackered I mean it was a new one but I know there was some damage to it when I had to take it off at one point and or I should say whether the inlet manifold is bowed because this is tight and actually there's a gap just down here both sides on on each arm of that inlet manifold so I've got another gasket ordered at Land Rover which I'm picking up today uh, or somebody is picking up on my behalf and I'll try that but when I take the inlet manifold off I will see whether it's flat on a um, you know on a flat surface but otherwise um, I've put the temporarily of course put the the rear tub on um, which needs in itself quite a lot of work but um, I, I, you know the plan is to put it all together so I can take it to Germany and Oh, I just think it looks really cool. Um, I mean, the rear tub itself, which I cleaned up as best I could, but literally just got rid of mud, is pretty knackered. So the cross members, the three cross members that run here, here and here, are all completely rusted through, so I need to get some more of those. Um, it's in pretty bad shape back here, but I can get that that panel. I can you know, buy that new, get a new floor, and some 
quite a bit of repair work here to these sections, which are pretty knackered. But yeah, that one's even worse over there. But uh, for the meantime, I will be able to patch it together with some some large washers and, and uh, we'll see how we get on. The, the issue I have now is that the rear body is not fitting here. It's not coming far, far enough back because the neck of the fuel tank is stopping that from happening, which is really annoying because I've got, you can adjust the, the, the fuel tank to sit further back um, in the chassis, but it seems to be at its maximum and it's still not fitting. So it could be another problem with the Richard chassis. Uh, I have already had one, um, so we'll just have to see. So today is, I'm gonna try and get the um, sills in. They are untreated and I've cleaned them up a little bit, but they're a good set, which I bought secondhand. Mine are completely rusted and they are galvanized in it originally as you can see there, but yeah, they could do with a, a, a coating in red oxide or hammerite or even both. And um, so I'll get those on. I'll get the seat base on, which I have previously done. That was quite a lot of work to get that done. A lot of repair work. I painted the whole thing and that will fit on there. And then I'll use, I'll just use the behind that board there. There are the original floor panels, which are pretty knackered, but they will work fine for just putting it all back together. So hopefully I can get that done today. That's a lot to do obviously, but if I can get that done today, get that new gasket in. Um, Cause this is sort of my last day today and tomorrow. I'm going back to Germany on Sunday with the family. Uh, my wife's flying out tomorrow, so it's gonna be pretty busy. So today's really my last full day on the car. Um, and uh, see how we get on. It'd be also worth noting that um, I did drive it backwards and forwards about three feet the other day when it was running really lumpy. But when, when it is done, I've got quite a lot of clearing work to do, as you can see, because it was three years ago it came in through here. And um, there's a lot of undergrowth or overgrowth, <laughs> whichever you want to call it. There's quite a lot of work to clear this way. I mean, this will be my route here. Um, and, but this is gonna be the way, and it's an absolutely beautiful day here today. Really blue sky, look at that, here's the moon. And it's a lovely, lovely day. But this is this is my way in here. So yeah, I've got quite a bit of quite a bit of work to do here to, to um, be able to drive the car out. Because not only have I got to clear all this mess here, all these branches, but also take down or take back some of those those uh, living branches. Um, there's also underneath here, which you can't really see, a big mound of earth. Uh, but I'll probably just be able to drive over that uh, when when the time comes. Oops. Um, but that this is. How we're looking so far uh, from the back it's amazing actually how high this rear body sits um, with the parabolic springs you know I'm six foot five so the camera is already standing pretty pretty high but if I got down onto a normal level when I mean, obviously that back body's got to come down a little bit but only by an inch or so and it is very high which um, I think is very cool actually uh, I've got those pieces of wood under there to support the body but um, I'll try and see if I can show you, you know, how can I do that, like that. Yeah, this is up to my, just also up to, almost up to my chest. And as I say, I'm pretty tall, so, so something you can lean on like that, that's how high it is. But yeah, looking forward to getting it done and I will now get on with it.
to the bloody lawn. the first drive um, it, all the gears work there's a bit of bit of whining in in, uh, in a couple of the gears but um, that's probably because I can only get it into four-wheel drive and low ratio the um, the handle here doesn't go far enough forward so I'm stopping it here to a select uh, high ratio which is a bit of a pest so only into uh, four-wheel drive at the moment but otherwise I think it sounds pretty good. I'll probably have to do the timing properly, but, but it sounds absolutely brilliant. And yeah, it's quite comfortable. Suspension's quite comfortable. Sounds pretty good. 